Okay, so buried below our second berth is our vacuum flush um, container. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, try to give you a little better picture. Sorry, the lighting's really bad. It's dark down here. So this is the actual vacuum tank here. This is the vacuum switch. This is the pump. These are the sides of the pump. This is actually where the duct bills are located. This is the billows. This is the motor. Um, as you can see, this power wire comes out of the vacuum switch and then the ground actually connects to your main wires. So you're gonna have, typically in most, most, most boat construction, you're gonna have yellow ground and uh, red positive uh, for your 12 volt system. Um, so uh, first thing to do, obviously, is figure out what was going on. There is a little cap that goes like this. Uh, you just kind of loosen the screws and slide it over and take it off. Uh, it has an identification on it for what kind of pump you have and what kind of motor uh, that'll help you find parts. Um, but luckily, most of the parts work for all the motors. Uh, it just depends on the age of things as to whether you have to update some other things. So this white thing down here is the billows. Um, so when you find one online, you'll see it just looks like a big toilet plunger. Uh, essentially what happens is the motor spins and this is on a cam, moves up and down and it rocks the billows back and forth inside of this bucket, which creates a pumping action. Um, and essentially this comes from the toilet, goes down into, into this vacuum tank. Uh, as this draws up from here, the pump draws up from the tank uh, and building pressure and then it blows it to your holding tank the here so you can actually move stuff uphill and that's what's great about vacuum flush uh, gives you a lot more room to uh, uh, do plumbing and stuff and that's why uh, boat builders like it so much um, so once the sink is going to start pumping it's going to form a vacuum in here and now if you have a vacuum flush toilet you'll be familiar with the whooshing noise when you flush and that's where that vacuum comes from. It's inside of this tank. Under here is a vacuum switch. And I don't think I can get it off without moving the pump out of the way. Because it's, oh, there we go. Okay, so essentially you've got a spring and a contact switch. And as the vacuum builds inside of the tank, it draws this in and that will tell it when to shut off. So, uh, very simple, um, pretty ingenious, uh, but of course, you know, like all things in boat, it wears out. Um, and we got double whammy here because it is boat and, well, shit, unfortunately. So, you know, they got to work on it. It's a bummer. Uh, you can pay people to do it, but you are going to bleed out the nose doing it. Um, anywho, so what we're going to do is we need to get the pump off first. There are one, two, three, and four screws. And then this thing will actually slide off to the back. Uh, excuse me, that's after you release the, um, it's kind of an axle bolt really uh, that goes into the cam. So uh, probably wanna take that guy off first so you got a little leverage here. You don't wanna kill it because this is just a fiber uh, reinforced plastic. So uh, with time and age, it does get brittle. You really wanna to torque down on it too hard. Uh, uh, Good, uh, good word of advice I've got some from other people is only use hand tools. Uh, as much as you might want to put your screw gun on here, bad idea. You want to do it by hand. It stinks, but uh, you'll be happy if you don't crack the plastic because if you have to buy this whole assembly, your repair costs are going to jump up uh, about 600 bucks, and you don't want to do that. Um, so after these four are removed and this axle bolt is removed, uh, this guy is going to rock out of the way. If you're lucky like me and you have these, you can unplug it and just put it off to the side because uh, that'll be it. Um, if you're hardwired in, just lay it off to the side somewhere where it's, it's out of the way and, and won't get in your way. Um, once that's done, you're gonna have these perimeter bolts that go around. Uh, you take those off, I believe they're 5 16 so same as your hose clamps. Um, now, depending on if you wanna do just the billows, that's really all you need to do. You can leave this bucket here hooked up to the hoses. However, if you want to do your duck bills while you're in here, 
since the duck bills are located inside of the pump, you're going to have to take off your hoses because you're going to want to take out the whole assembly to work on it outside. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier on you. Um, so uh, that's something to consider. Uh, bonus here, 5 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths. So one tool, no big deal. Uh, and that's a, should be, well, at least for me, it was a, a half inch. Um, good way to get these off, but it doesn't smell very great, is a, a hair dryer or a heat gun. Uh, you want to heat up the perimeter here. It'll get soft and it'll make it nice and easy to take off. And I'll show you again where that silicone grease will come into play. Um, anytime you're taking the hoses off, if you put silicone grease in, um, it makes life so much easier if you have to service it later because uh, you know, this puppy will just slide right off. Uh, it helps seal down the hose and uh, I mean, it's just good stuff. You know, it, it's, it's what they need to do and everything, but they never seem to do it. Uh, and the silicone grease that I'm talking about, uh, you can buy at uh, you know, like a CarQuest or AutoZone. You want to go look at a uh, brake grease, okay? Um, the, the, like this caliper grease, same stuff you would do if you were uh, redoing the brakes in your car. Um, it, it's fantastic stuff. It is going to cost you about $20 a bottle, but it's going to last you 10 years. So you really won't need to get more. Uh, anyway, so we're going to take this off and this whole cartridge will lift out and it'll bring the billows with it. There's going to be, you know, some leftovers down there that aren't going to smell good. Uh, you probably want to throw a rag over it. Um, in this case, I don't know that this will get worse because the billet loops are blown and this is all full of, well, old dinner. And uh, so anyway, you cover that up and uh, you know, you're good to go. Probably keep the ammonia smell out of the boat as best as possible. Um, the, the sewage gases will have a tendency to want to sit down in the bilge. They're not going to want to flush out. Uh, so you're going to have to use a fan to really get them out unless you just want to stick it out until they're gone. Um, which isn't great. Um, it's also a good time to clean everything up. Um, try as you might, you can never get a perfect seal on anything, especially sewage equipment. So wiping everything down uh, with maybe some Clorox wipes, um, you know, when you're in here, just clean it up. It'll, it'll help smell in the long run. Uh, and you know, the Admiral will appreciate it very much, especially when family comes over and goes, what's that funny smell? So. Anyway, uh, I will come back actually on Tuesday when I have parts in hand. I don't want to get into this because then I'll have a big bucket of poop right here to uh, you know, have to deal with for the next four days. But I will come back on Tuesday and we will rip this bad boy apart and get it fixed up and hopefully have some good flushes. Stay tuned.